Do you want more? More time, more balance, more love, more sex, more money, more real, and less bullshit? This is the Women Wanting More podcast with Dr. Karen Osborne. Real life, real stories, plus real tips to get you more of what you want. Make room for abundance. I heard somebody say this, read it, I think it might have been from the recent Gabby Bernstein book, I believe that I'm reading, which is called Super Attractor, but I loved this concept, and um, yeah, this is important to speak into today, but making room for abundance, making room for abundance, now let's first define abundance, okay, uh, the, the, the mindset of abundance is that there's enough for everybody, okay, there's enough to go around, We don't run out of supplies of things like money or resources or time. Like there's an abundance. There is always more to be coming in. There's always more for everybody versus scarcity. Scarcity will say, well, if that person has that thing, then I can't have it, right? Like somehow life or money, time, resources, love, whatever that is, is like like a pie. And there's only so many pieces of that pie. And so if she gets a piece or he gets a piece, that means that I can't, there's less for me, okay? That there's a finite amount of things to go around in the world. Abundance says that there is an abundance, that there's enough for everybody. And that is the way that the universe is designed to operate. However, we live in a world that... The word that comes to mind for me right away celebrates, celebrates scarcity, celebrates unhealthy competition, um, has a narrative running that says there's only so much. And so it's hard, right, to be living in this world, the, the bigger world, the world that we all live in, this 3D world, when that's going on. To be the one that stands up and says, you know what? No, I think there actually is enough for everything and for everyone. And there is no finite amount of love or time or money. Like, there is abundance. And when you start to adopt a a mindset of abundance, of saying, this is the way I'm going to choose to see the world. Which, by the way, it doesn't mean that you're always there. Okay? Please give yourself grace and compassion understanding that there will be times that you know, chaos ensues in life as it does. And we go, oh shit. And we get scared and kind of shut down and go to scarcity. Like it's okay. It's okay. This is not an all or nothing thing, right? You can be in a loving state 99% of the time with your kids and lose your shit. The 1% give yourself grace for that. It is okay. Is part of it, right? It's also part of it too. When we start to live our life from more of this place of abundance, then when we go to scarcity, we go, oh man, I'm in that, I'm in that scarcity place. Oh yeah, I feel the fear in this place. Oh yeah, it feels like crap. Like we're aware of it. And that awareness, by the way, is also what moves us out of those places of scarcity or out of the place of fear and into abundance and into love. And so when this whole concept of make room for abundance was like, oh yeah, because what do we end up doing a lot of time? Focus on the problem, focus on what's not happening, focus on the lack of whatever that, however that lack shows up in your life. You focus on that and you don't prepare for abundance. You prepare for worst case scenario. You prepare for, you know, what's happening right now in this moment, which is this and this. And then that means that this is going to happen in the future. And see, it's just like it always happened in the past. Do you see how that is the narrative that often is played by ego? That smaller part of us that is scared and wants you to play small and wants you to hide and to shrink. Which, by the way, that's not the true essence of you. And we all have that ego side of ourselves. But our true or highest self, our truest self who we are, our essence, our isness, our beingness is abundance. We gotta make room for that. So just like you'll have insurance for your vehicle, you have insurance for your home, you have life insurance of the worst case scenario stuff, right? And then you just take care of that and then you don't think about it anymore, right? So 
you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to kind of assume, but for most of us, when we drive our vehicles, we don't think of, oh my God, well, if I got in a car accident, da, da, da. it's like, no, no, I have the insurance, like it's done. I'm, I'm handled, I'm taken care of. If there was to be a fire, you know, we're taken care of. The house is like, it's, it's covered, right? If I was to die suddenly, like my family will be provided for. I have life insurance, right? Like we have all these things in place and then we don't start to, th- we don't like obsess about it. It's just, it's just there. And so imagine if the same, same thing, right? That you were going through a challenge that you are in your life right now. And as opposed to you taking action from a place of fear and scarcity, that you make room for abundance. And you realize that this is the place that we are designed to be is in abundance. It's not scarcity. Fear is not supposed to be a natural state of being. It is, it is unnatural to be in that place all of the time. Abundance is our birthright, but we have to make room for it. You know, it's kind of this conversation of expecting it versus not having expectations. I know, this seems like a, it's a paradox, right? Where we go, well, I just know, like I know that I am being provided for, I know that I am protected, I'm okay where I am right now. Abundance, I know that it will be provided for. I know that I'm being supported in ways that I can't even really even see right now. But I let go of that control and I trust and I surrender. And I know that the universe is, is an abundant place and this is this is how I'm supposed to be being in the world. Abundance. But we have to expect that. Now expectation is a little bit different. Expectation is it must look a certain way. And if it doesn't, well, then it's, it's not giving me what I want, right? So let's say, for example, that, you know, perhaps you're having a challenge with health right now, right? And so you have an expectation where you go, Mom, well, my body must look a certain way. In order for me to do that, I must restrict all the food going into my body, and I must work out X number of minutes, hours each day, this many days per week, and I must do these things, and I must feel this way, and I must, and I must, and I must, right? And we get so fixated, obsessed with it, must, like the expectation you're putting on yourself, right? The expectation you may be putting on others to support you on this, like, you know, really, what's the word that I would say? Militant, right? Way of seeing this is how health is produced is, is not necessarily a healthy one, is actually very constrictive, is actually very controlling versus... Well, I expect that health is my birthright, and I know that's where we are all designed to be. And so let me just actually open up. I'm going to expect that there will be enough time for me. I'm going to expect that there'll be enough resources. I will expect that I will find a way to make it happen. Like maybe, for example, your mom, and you also work. Like, I know what that's like, right? Being primary caregiver for your kids. Like, it's a lot. It's a lot to take that on. And, and to work and provide and care for yourself and, you know, take care of your physical well-being, your emotional well-being. Like, it's a lot. Like, I see you, sister. I see it. And so we could run the narrative which says there's never enough time and I can't do this. And we could play the whole martyr and like, well, when the kids are older, I can. And it's just the way it is because I'm mom. We could go, wait a second. What if I just open myself up for possibility? What if I just open up and made room for abundance? And that when we begin, to, we begin to just change the way that we see things, that perhaps something opens up. We get a friend that suddenly says, hey, you know what? My kids would love to play with your kids. And so, like, would you like to have, like, an hour or two? We just live down the street. And, like, I like, watch the kids for a little bit. You know, you have a little time for yourself because I see, you know, you got a lot going on, a lot of support and possibility, Right possibility maybe you sign your kids up for you know a class or a lesson or something like that you know it's like hey there's like an adult thing here that I like to do another class or hey they've got a gym I can go work at the same time or hey when they're the lesson I'm gonna go and go for a walk at that point we start to make room for abundance when we have that mindset when we open things up in our mind to possibility which is abundance which is there's enough time like I will find a way Without pushing, without forcing, without control, we make room for abundance. It is incredible the miracles that will start to pop in. The inspiration that you will get. The inspired action. 
that happens when you make room for abundance. And you can apply that same analogy, that same way of being, that same way of seeing to any area of your life. We can apply it to money. We can apply it to time. We can apply it to love. We can apply it to time with your kids. Abundance. Abundance. It's real. This is not kind of like woo-woo-ish pie in the sky. Like, no, this is real. This is real. Listen, there isn't enough time in the podcast for me to go through and share the lottery list of things that have happened in my 50 years here on the planet of how many times that things did open up that abundance but it was only when I would go okay I'm gonna let go of trying to control this I'm gonna let go of it's got to look this way it's like all or nothing like I'll give you one really quick example here so I remember when our youngest son was probably maybe a year and a half Tyson was and um probably my old, oldest son oldest son our first boy and kind of being like, well, because I used to like, I used to go to CrossFit probably four or five days a week. I would hit hot yoga classes three, four or five days a week. Like I worked out a lot. Like I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. And then Tyson came along. I was like, okay, this is, this is a different way of being now. And I'm not sleeping. And he's up a lot. And I'm trying to figure things out. You know, as you do, you know, if you're a mom or a dad that with that first one, you're just like, oh God, man, I thought I kind of knew kids and all this stuff and whoa, it's different being a parent. Completely different. Yeah, it's a different thing. And so, so then I thought, well, I can't, uh, I can't work out. This is just the way it is. I started to play the martyr. I should feel sorry for myself. And then I was just like, well, what if I open up the possibility that yes, I can't do the five days a week with the responsibilities I have with raising our young son and being in the practice full time and like all of this. And what if I just open up the possibility of like, I'm going to go to CrossFit two times a week and I'm going to bring Tyson. And they actually created something called like mama's classes. So they'd, you know, all the kids would kind of be like in the little playpen kind of area. And then the moms would work out. And then there'd be times when Tyson started to get a bit older and then he's like, he wanted to be held and he's like fussing and stuff. I'm like, oh, well, I remember sometimes picking him up and doing the workout with Tyson, right? It was just like, okay, let me just, let me be open to find another way. The, you know, we're doing lunges and they were weighted lunges. I'm like, well, I'm just going to hold Tyson. You know, we're doing box jumps. I'm like, well, I'm just going to hold my boy and I'm going to step up onto the box. Like there is a way, there's enough to going around. I will find a way to be able to move my body, right? And I would walk, we would walk every single day. I'd walk, pushing the stroller, even through the crazy snow we get, we used to live in Alberta, dogs on one side, two leashes, our two big Chesapeake Bay Retrievers, Tyson pushing through the snow with his stroller, at times cursing under my breath going, oh, this is so hard pushing this through, but like, I just opened myself up to, maybe it needs to look different, right? And I started to do burpees in the morning. And I, I just simply found a way. Now, that doesn't make me some kind of like a superstar because I did that. You see, it was just simply a way of shifting the way that I saw things. Abundance started to open up. I began to see possibility. I began to go, oh, wow, well, I could actually do this and it could look different. So I still expected that there was room for me to do this once I got my head out of my ass and said, okay, the scarcity thing is just not working for me. And let me open it up. And I let go of the expectation that it had to look a certain way. Hitting a, hitting a really hard workout five days a week at CrossFit, going to 60 minute hot yoga classes four days a week. Like that was just, that just, that wasn't working at that time. And I made room for abundance and guess what started to show up. So here's your more tip for today. I want you to pick one area of your life. It could be some things that we talked about, right? It could be your health. Like I was sharing then with right now with my story with Tyson when he was little. It could be something within your marriage, your partnership, your significant other. It could be something as, as parent. It could be something within your business. It could be with spirituality. Like where is it right now where you've just shut down? You're like, nope, it's got to look this way. And if it's not in the box, then I fail or I just can't do it. That you simply, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to open up your journal. I want you to just to first, number one, just identify what the area is, right? So do that first. And then to write this at the top of your journal page, I'm making room for abund I'm making room for abundance with, and then fill in the blank. That's the thing that you want to make room for abundance for. Okay. By 
dot, dot, dot. So I am making room for abundance with blank, the thing that you want to work on, pick one, okay, by, so by, dot, 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 and start to free write. See, it's only when we open ourselves up for possibility of being able to see something differently and just being curious about it. Don't be constrictive about it. I'll just choose you just to be open. I'm like, well, what would that look like? Now, ego's going to want to come in and go, oh, well, you can't make it happen that way, and good luck with that. And like, don't even go, don't worry about the how. This is simply a journaling exercise. With so much love and compassion, sister, brother, you may even shut down with this. You may even hear my words right now and go, well, I can't make it happen. Good for you, Karen. And like, I, I hear you. I've been there before too, so I understand that. I have zero judgment if you were in that place right now. But I'll just invite you to still open up your journal, still just be curious about it. You know, kind of like have your little Sherlock Holmes sleuth hat on, go, huh, I'm just kind of curious. I wonder if it could be like this way or that way. And just have some curiosity about this. Take the walls down that you've created that's, you know, blocking all that stuff. And see what starts to come through. See how you can possibly begin to make room for abundance and therefore miracles to begin to really show up in your life. Yeah. Yeah. All right, sister. So finishing up, listen, this is so exciting. This is the first time I'm talking about the podcast. Okay. I am doing my first live at a live event experience and that I, I haven't done one for two years now. So first in two years. So this is called the woman wanting more retreat experience. It'll be January, 2020. Okay, so just in about two and a half months or so, three months, I guess, for the beginning of November right now. Wait, December? Yeah, two and a half, two and a half. It'll be the third or fourth week in January. I'm looking at spaces right now, and that'll get confirmed up very, very soon. And this is open for application. So this is a completely different live event experience than I've ever done before. And so this is for you if you are at a crisis, you're at a crossroads, you're trying to figure out like how to do things. And, you know, through a live event experience, and I've just, I've missed doing them so much. I really, really have. And it's time for me to step back into this because the speed at which things can begin to shift in a live event in this, in this type of an experience is significant. Like literally, there'd just be such incredible transformations. And this is over two days where you literally won't even recognize yourself at the end in a good way. Okay, it's so amazing when even we take like pictures, like here's all of us at the beginning, here's all of us at the end, like the, the difference in women's eyes, the possibility, right? The being from scarcity to abundance. So if you're at a crisis crossroads, you've been trying all this stuff, you don't want to keep waiting any longer. You're like, I just, it's costing me so much right now to sit on this problem. And you start to see that, man, if I stay this way for another couple months, six months, year, two years, like things are going to continue to get worse and I need help and I want to raise my hand. All right. So this is my application only. It's limited to the first 12 women that I accept. And so this might be for you. This might not be for you, but this is a way for you to meet with me and 11 other amazing women here in Victoria, BC, Canada, where I live. Beautiful BC, where we have ocean and mountains and nature all around us. And we're going to really work on these pieces of like getting what you want within your life, of being able to set boundaries, of knowing your worthiness, of understanding that you are enough, of understanding how you're able to show up in your divine feminine. Like these are all significant. This is not about setting goals and this is deeper. This is about unwinding a lot of the subconscious program, the reasons that you keep sabotaging, the reasons that you're not even taking a step in the first place. And you're going, I can't figure this out. So this is for you if all this is resonating with you. So here's what you need to do. You need to email me, drkarenosburn at gmail.com, D-R-K-A-R-E-N-O-S-B-U-R-N at gmail.com. Okay, so drkarenosburn at gmail.com or drkaren at drkarenosburn.com and email me and simply say, Karen, I'd like to apply for the retreat experience, please. Okay, and I will connect with you from there and check your inbox. Okay, I've had within, since I actually just announced this on a Facebook post a few days ago, I've had probably 
15 women reach out to me. So very quickly, because again, it's been a long time since I've had a live event. I know a lot of you are kind of like waiting going, oh, I've heard her talk about this or I missed the last ones. I'm like, I'm ready now to do this. And so many of you are just like, you're jumping at it, right? So don't miss out. Cause I really see that by the end of November, all these 12 seats will be full. That's it. They're going to go very, very fast. So email me right away. Dr. Karen at drkarenosborn.com or drkarenosborn at gmail.com and say, I'd like to apply for the retreat experience and I will connect with you from there. So I will talk in the next episode, sister. A life of more really is one step away from you making room for abundance every single day. I love and appreciate you. To get the show notes of each Women Wanting More episode, including the how to get more tip, subscribe to the newsletter at drkarenosborn.com slash newsletter.